So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, once again, welcome to our mathematics class, um, of which this is a mathematics lecture. So, please make sure that you follow up and make sure that you ask questions where you are not clear. So, in today's class, we are simply going to look at complex numbers. I'm pretty sure in the previous class we looked at um, irrational numbers and now we are moving on to the complex numbers. After we do complex numbers, we'll start looking at um, SADs and their manipulations. So please make sure that you follow up the class and make sure that you can ask questions where you are not clear. So what are complex numbers so um do we have anyone within us who is having a calculator right now anyone who has a calculator can you punch for me square root negative one yes Math error. Correct. So square root negative one is giving you math error. So that's where now complex numbers come in. So one thing you need to understand is that some numbers, okay? One thing we need to understand is that some numbers or problems, some numbers or problems uh, cannot be solved, cannot be solved cannot be solved using real numbers some numbers or problems cannot be solved using real numbers so when you talk of real numbers these are numbers that can uh, that consists of numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity when you talk of real numbers these are numbers which are negative infinity up to positive infinity so um one thing we need to understand is that some problems uh, cannot be solved using the real numbers for example the one we have just talked about which is square root um which is square root one okay so we can say let's say we have square root negative one which when you place on the calculator is going to give you math error okay so because of this simple complex number because of this thing complex numbers were being introduced so because of this problem here where we cannot solve some numbers using real numbers alone okay because we cannot solve some questions or problems using real numbers alone so another type of number was introduced and this type of number is what we are calling the complex number okay so because because of this because of this complex numbers complex numbers were introduced because of this complex numbers were introduced okay so because of this problem where we cannot solve certain questions using the real numbers alone what happened is that we we had to introduce the the type of number which is known as the what the the complex numbers okay so let me quickly uh, illustrate something so when you talk of complex numbers you need to understand that let's say you have square root negative one so if you talk about square root negative one this square root negative one when you place it on a calculator it's going to give you math error or um, it's going to give you um, the synthetic error so in such a case this square root negative one was being um was being equated to an imaginary number this square root one since 
uh, since we understand that there is no answer for square root negative 1 as a result an imaginary number was introduced and this imaginary number has been represented by what by letter i so letter i is just telling you that this is what this is an imaginary number so from here from this property from this property which i've already stated here you need to understand that this can be worked on this can be worked on such that you can simply introduce a square this side and also a squared that side so after that you can simply have a solution whereby you're going to have i squared i squared is equal to what is equal to negative one i squared is equal to negative one so what i've written here it is an important formula or expression that you are supposed to know so this one it's something that you need to make sure that you take note so as we deal with complex numbers as we deal with um, complex numbers mostly in most cases we we'll find ourselves in a situation whereby we are going to be doing what we are going to be using this particular formula for us to understand so in other words when you talk of complex numbers when you talk of complex numbers so complex numbers have a real part and the words and imaginary part okay so complex numbers let me write that complex numbers have a real part have a real part have a real part and the imaginary part so complex numbers have a real part and an imaginary part an imaginary part okay so i'm going to explain this in terms of um the expression which i'm going to um which i'm going to write down there so complex numbers have a real part and an imaginary part so you have a plus let's say ib okay a plus i b so this is an expression which we have been given a plus ib and we need to take note that um when you talk of a complex number a complex number is made up of what is made up of the the real part and the, the imaginary part so the whole of this expression here it is known as the what the complex number so everything here is known as the what the complex number so now from this complex number you have two parts of it the first part is what we are calling the what the real part so this part here it's the one which we are calling the what the real part so this is known as the real part then you have another part which is known as the what the imaginary part so if you look at the part which is having an i remember we introduced i squared is equal to negative one so i is just representing what imaginary okay so the part which is having an i it's the one which we normally call the what the imaginary part so the one which is having an i is the one which we are calling the what the imaginary part so when you talk of the definition of what a complex number is so when you talk of a complex number a complex number is a number that has the real part and the what the imaginary part so this is the correct definition that you can give when you talk about um when you talk about complex numbers now two complex numbers can be added or subtracted so complex numbers can be added and they can also be what they can also be subtracted 
take note of that complex numbers can be added and they can also be subtracted just like any type of number okay just like any type of number for example you can add 2 plus 3 those are two real numbers even complex numbers they can be what they can be added they can be subtracted and they can be divided so make sure that you follow up the root because this root is the root that you shall be asked to use and this is something that will help you to understand so before i move on i don't know if there are any questions please feel free to ask questions Ladies and gentlemen, do we have anyone with a single question? Do we have anyone with a single question? Okay, I have three people with questions. I'll start with Benzo. What's your question, Benzo? Uh, for me, it's not really a question. I just wanted to ask, can your, your screen... To me, the way you're sharing your screen, it's like it's going out, coming back, it's tripping. So I'm failing to write what you are sharing on your screen. I don't know if it's my network or there's someone else experiencing that. Uh, no, I'm sure we are all experiencing that. I'm also experiencing that. Uh, yeah, everyone, we are all experiencing that. Should be the network, but the the good part is I'm going to send the notes and i'm also going to to send the video so we can follow up from there but make sure that okay thank you yeah make sure that when the screen shows you you get whatever is there um all right yeah the next person let me check the hands i can see florence what's your question Um, I wanted to ask, how did we come up with the negative one there on the, I don't know if it's a formula or anything like that, whereby we had to introduce the square roots, then when I tried to write the uh, uh, open bracket square root negative one close to the power two, it's not giving me direct the positive, the negative one. Square roots negative one, you introduce the squared that means that this square root and the square they will cancel each other the square root and the square they will cancel each other it's more like you have square root x when you introduce a squared this square root and that square they will cancel and you're going to have x same applies with something like square root negative one when you introduce a squared because we don't have the answer for negative uh the ne square root negative one so we introduce that when this one and that one cancel they'll give you negative one oh so we only had to introduce the square uh, this, the power two just to cancel the square root huh? exactly no thank you Okay. Yes, Benzo, you have a question or you just rose your hand? Oh well, no, I forgot to drop it. Okay, all right. Okay, let's move on and look at uh, some few examples. So, um, like I've already stated, like I've already stated. So, um, complex numbers. So, complex numbers complex numbers can be complex numbers can be one they can be added they can be subtracted they can be divided by so they can be added okay complex numbers can be added they can be subtracted okay they can be subtracted they can also be um multiplied and divided by they can be multiplied and divided by so they can also 
be divided by so uh, complex numbers in short complex numbers can be treated like any other number okay so complex numbers let me write that complex numbers can be treated can be treated just like any other number so they can be treated just like any other type of number any other type of number okay so this is something that we should um that we should make sure that we understand when it comes to complex numbers so um with this in mind i'm going to give few examples okay with this in mind i'm going to give few examples from here so i'll start with the basics then from the basics i'll start um going bit by bit until we do the division of complex numbers so i'll start with addition then go with um Sub, uh, subtraction and addition automatically what you do with addition is the same thing you can do with subtraction then i'll go with multiplication and lastly i'll look at division which is somehow very very important okay so um let's quickly move on and look at the examples let's move on and look at the examples okay so the example is work out the following the example is work out the following so that's our first examples and then the first one is let's say we have something like 4 plus i and then you have plus let's say there we have 3 minus 6 i so this is what we have so this is what we have for the first example and then i'll go in detail and look at the next example so the first example is saying the first example is saying work out the following so a is uh, open bracket 4 plus i plus 3 minus 6 i so i'll put my solution just so in the case all right so um so from here what you you have to do is you can just simply write the the answer the the, the question so for that one you're just going to say four plus i since the the statement is not that really important so four plus i plus then open bracket you can say three minus 6i so this is our question and this is how you can easily work it out so what you are going to do in this case what you are going to do in this case you're just going to remove the bracket because nothing is affecting these guys so you're just going to say 4 plus i and then you say plus 3 minus c 6i so from your basic mathematics knowledge on algebra whereby you need to you need to correct the the like terms you surely need to correct the like terms so if we were to correct the like terms so you can say four and three are like terms because these are real numbers okay so four you you add four plus three and then you say plus i minus what six c i so I have collected the imaginary part and the the real part okay so one thing that you need to know that as you correct the like terms you're not supposed to change any sign the signs are just supposed to be the sign because nothing has changed so from there you can simply add the real part which is 4 plus 7 4 plus 3 which is simply 7 and then plus i minus 6i is just what t 5v i so this is the what this is the answer when you are simply adding these two guys okay so with this in mind i can 
give another example on this particular section which i'll write as my b so my b can be let's say i have something like 3i and then 3i let me write 3i and then i have plus 2 open brackets then let's say i have minus then i have let's say um i have something like i i minus 2 okay so such an expression so this was our a i can now work out our b and that's how easily you can work it out so when you talk of our b this expression is not affected by anything because there is nothing um nothing in front of it so you just write 3i plus c2 and then you say um minus multiply by that okay minus multiply by that so that will be negative i then you say minus multiply by negative 2 it's just going to be what positive 2 so here you collect the the like terms so when you collect the like terms it's going to give you 2 plus 2 2 plus 2 and then you say plus 3i and then you say minus i so after that when you work out this will be 4 and then 4 plus what 2i because we know that 3i minus i is simply what is simply 4i so this is the final answer for this particular question and this is how you can easily work out when it comes to um, addition and subtraction of the complex numbers so this is how easily you can add and subtract the complex numbers i don't know if there's any question i'll start with benzu what's your question question is on the order the way you put 4 plus 2i because when you presented the question i was trying to solve then we arranged it in 2i plus 4 so do they also follow the order of how you arrange which one comes first or what so um so basically one thing that you need to understand that um when you talk of arrangement of numbers it's 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 something that is a bit commutative and associative we talked about that in sets so let's say i say a plus b i okay and then someone says b i plus a okay this expression and that expression they are the same but in most cases for you to know in which way are you supposed to write is by checking the what the question so there are questions whereby you have been told in which form you are supposed to express but most of the time they will ask you to express in that form that's why my answer has come out in that particular form because this is the most the most common way um these guys are being expressed is that okay benzo yes thank you you're welcome okay so let's move on and look at more examples that um we are supposed to take note of i don't know if there are any questions ladies and gentlemen if there are any questions feel free to ask and i'll be able to respond do we have any question okay since there are no questions we'll look uh, at c and check if at all we can try out and solve one or two questions so um you know one thing you need to understand is that in most cases when you deal with uh multiplication there is a part where you will need to and uh, you need to you need to apply addition and subtraction in multiplication okay when you multiply everything automatically there will be a point where you need to add them or subtract them so that's why it's very important you know how to add 
and subtract and later on you go to um you know how to multiply so solution so please follow me well please follow me well on this particular point please follow me well on this particular point so what you're going to do here what you're going to do here let me just use a color that will be visible so what you're going to do here you're going to multiply everything in here with that thing there so you're going to say 4 plus i 4 plus i multiplied by 3 minus 2i so what you're going to do is you're going to say 4 open bracket 3 minus 2i close bracket then from that you're going to say plus i and then open bracket you say 3 minus 2i so this is the first way or the first uh, route you are supposed to take when you are trying to do what when you are trying to multiply so after you do that your next thing is to multiply 4 times 3 is automatically what 12 4 times negative 2i it is what it is the 8i okay then you are going to say i times 3 it is just the 3i i times 3 it is 3i then i times negative 2i this is where i really need to make sure that you guys understand so you have you have something that we made as a formula so we are having negative 2i, okay, times i, that i there. This i outside, we are multiplying it by negative 2i. So this will give us negative 2 times i times what? Times i. Negative 2 times i times i. So when you have i and i, this will simply give you negative 2 times what? times i squared okay negative 2 times the i squared so the i squared which we have developed here it is from the formula the i squared which we have come across at this particular point is from the word from the formula so who knows what is i squared what is i squared what is i squared negative one correct so you're going to say negative two times negative one and this will simply give you what two so at that point this will just be plus what t plus two so the plus two is coming from the fact that when you multiply two i's it's going to give you when you multiply two i's it's going to give you um it's going to give you the negative one so from there you can simply work out and this will give you 12 plus 2 it's just 14 the negative 8i plus 3i is just simply negative 5i so this is your final answer is that okay ladies and gentlemen is it okay I can clearly get you. I can. I can get you. So it's clear now. All right. Um, there are more examples. There, there are more examples. There are more examples which I've worked on on one of the videos on my YouTube channel. So please make sure that you go and watch it as a revision. It's less than twenty minutes. So um.
Any other question before I move on? Chimoka, what's your question? Chimoka, unmute yourself and ask. I wanted to ask one. I wanted to ask if you can repeat on how we got the positive 2. You say I squared I times I. I times I is the same as I squared. So I squared from the formula it's negative 1. From the first page we discuss I squared is the same as negative 1. So negative 2 times negative 1 it's simply 2. Negative times negative, it's positive. Is that okay, Chimoka? Yes, it's okay. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any other hand? Okay. Since we don't have any question, I can move on and look at... Um, the other part of um, of complex numbers. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, the the part which we are supposed to learn now, um, the part which we are supposed to learn now is a part that um, that depends on another part. The part which we are about to do is a part that um that depends on another on another part so when you talk of um when you talk of when you talk of division so when you talk of division of complex numbers it depends on a part which we are normally calling finding the conjugate of a complex number okay so when you are trying to do the division of complex numbers you need to understand the aspect of conjugates of a complex number so this is the part which you guys um you are supposed to know so i'm going to say finding finding the conjugates finding the conjugates the conjugates finding the conjugates of a complex number of a complex number finding the conjugate of a complex number so this is very important because this is something that will form the basic information when you are dealing with division of um, a complex number so um, the conjugates the conjugates I'm going to write that the conjugates the conjugates of the conjugate of a plus b i the conjugate of a plus b i is the conjugate of a plus b i is is just simply a minus c b i a minus c b i okay let me just erase that so that i can use a different color and you guys will be able to see the the difference so the conjugate of a the conjugate of a plus b i is simply a minus b i or b i minus a okay so the conjugate of the conjugate of a plus b i remember a plus b i is a complex numbers which we have been talking about okay so the conjugate of a plus b i is a minus b i or b i minus a what does this mean you're just simply changing the the sign for one of them you are just simply changing the sign of one of them so if you look at the sign here 
if you look at the sign here this sign is positive right we have just put minus pi where there is positive we have put a negative even when you check out this guy okay when you check out this guy you're going to understand that we have just changed the sign for neg for a from positive to negative so when you talk of a conjugate okay when you talk of a conjugate you need to understand that for a particular conjugate you need to find understand that for a particular conjugate you just have to change the sign of a complex number that you have been given just one of them you can either change for the imaginary one or you can change for for the real one so in this case for the first one i've only changed the sign for the imaginary part then the second one i've changed the 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 sign for the real part only one of them has to have what has to have um has to have the 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 opposite sign so the next thing that you need to understand is the notation okay the next thing that you need to understand is the notation um there are some questions that they they won't really tell you um they won't really tell you that this and that or do that and that okay so you have to make sure that you know the notation of the conjugate of a given what of a given um of a given of a given complex number okay so let's say we have been given something like that given that given that z okay given that z is equal to given that z is equal to let's say you have 3 minus 7i and then the question is find find a which is just z bar okay so if you come across a question where there is a bar there okay where there is a bar like that so this bar is just telling you that you are looking for the what for the for the conjugate so the bar on top the bar on top of z the bar on top of z simply simply mean that simply mean that we are looking for the conjugate of z we are looking for the conjugate of z so some question um we are looking for the conjugate of z the conjugate of z so some questions they they might not use the word um they might not use the word um find the conjugate of whatever so for some questions they just put a bar like that so if there is a bar on top of a given okay on top of a given conjugate number then what they're just simply trying to ask you is for you to find the, the conjugate so the bar on top of z the bar on top of z okay the bar on top of z is simply telling you that is simply telling you that look for the conjugate of what z so in this particular situation given that z is 3 minus 7i so the answer of z bar is simply equal to 3 plus 7i so i've just changed the sign where there is negative in that z i've put um i've simply put 7i or okay or you can say negative 3 minus what 7i so in that case i've just changed the sign for what for negative for 3 from positive to negative whereas maintaining for 
negative seven e i. So these are the two. Uh, these are the two conjugates, and the only thing that I'm interested in is you knowing this bar on top, and this bar on top is simply telling you that uh, you are looking for the conjugate. You are looking for the conjugate. Now, with this in mind, you guys are supposed to be able. Okay, you guys are supposed to be able to work out the division of um, the division of um, of complex numbers. The division of complex numbers. So you guys are supposed to make sure that you are able to find the, the you are able to find the the division of complex numbers do we have any questions so far ladies and gentlemen so um looking at at how um how involving the division of complex numbers is so what i'm going to do is um we are going to continue on the division of complex numbers so we are going to continue on the division of complex numbers um in the next class so uh the only thing that i would love to emphasize on is um multiplying a complex number with its conjugate so that's the part that i'm supposed to also emphasize on so multiplying multiplying a complex number a complex number with its conjugates its conjugates can be illustrated as follows can be illustrated as follows so multiplication um, multiplication of complex numbers okay, with its conjugate can be illustrated as follows so for example uh, like we have already expressed in terms of um, a plus C B I or I B so B I so we need to understand that the conjugate of a plus b i okay the conjugate so if you look at the conjugate of a plus b i so i'm going to state let's say the conjugate of that expression conjugates is simply equal to what a minus c b i i'm just going to pick one, just one okay a minus c b i so in such a case if we were to multiply these two let's say we multiply a plus c b i we multiply it by a minus c b i a plus b i we multiply it by a minus c b i so what we are going to find is that these are difference of two squares okay these are difference of two squares so this expression can simply be written as this expression can simply be written as let's say this since it's a difference of two squares that was your basic mathematics from your secondary schools and primary schools so this since it's the difference of two squared you're just going to say a squared minus okay since it's different of two squares open bracket b i squared b i squared but you really know that i squared is negative one i squared is negative one i'm pretty sure you guys are able to remember that i squared is what is negative one so if i squared is negative one so that means that a will maintain its position as a squared then you are going to have since this i squared is negative one that means that this will be multiplied by that and it's going to be 
positive b squared. So this is what normally happens when you multiply the what when you multiply the conjugate with the, its 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 conjugate. When you multiply a complex number with the, its conjugate. So when you multiply a complex number with its conjugate, this is what is going to happen. In a case of a number, in a case of a number, this is what's going to happen. Let's say I have something like negative 3, okay, negative 3 plus C 7i. Let's say I have negative 3 plus 7i, okay. So if you look at negative 3 plus 7i, its conjugate, what's the conjugate of negative 3 plus 7i? Can someone state? Anyone to try? So the conjugates can be positive 3, can be positive 3, positive 3 and what? Okay, correct. So it can be negative 3 plus 7i. Or it can be negative 3 minus 7i. I'm going to be much interested in changing for the for the, the imaginary part. So it can also be negative 3 minus 7i. Okay. So this is the conjugate of that. So if you were to multiply these two, negative 3 plus 7i i and then you multiply it by negative 3 minus 7 i so what you are going to have here is as follows you are going to have an expression where negative 3 okay this is the difference of two squares negative 3 squared and then you are going to say minus then you say um negative 7 i squared negative 7 i squared okay so this will be equal to if you work out properly you're going to say um 3 negative 3 squared is just simply 9 and then inside there you have inside there you have i squared i squared um i squared is negative 1 negative 1 times negative is going to be what plus then negative 7 squared is just simply equal to what? 49. Okay. So that's what you're going to find when you work out that particular part. So once you say 9 plus 49, automatically it's going to give you what? 58. It's going to give you 58. So this is how easily you can manipulate what conjugate so when you are multiplying when you are multiplying conjugate you know when you are multiplying a conjugate with the complex number when you are multiplying a complex number with its conjugate what you are going to have it is a real number what you are going to have is a real number when you multiply a complex number with its conjugate you are going to have a real number I'm repeating that. When you multiply a complex number with its conjugate, you are going to have a what? A real number. So in the next class, I'm going to pick it up from this particular endpoint. And that's when now I'm going to introduce the division of all complex C numbers. So I don't know if there is any question so far so that I know where I can explain I explain once more. Any question? Okay, I can see a question from Lukundo. Yes, Rukundo, what's your question? So, on the, on the second step, why do you put minus between negative 3 and negative 7 squared? Which one? 
here on negative 3 squared minus negative 7 i squared why did we put minus in between the two because it is what it is the difference of two squares so for example when you say x squared okay when you say x squared minus 4 okay and you are asked to factorize when you are asked to factorize such an expression so this will just be x open bracket x minus 2 and then you say close bracket you say x plus c 2 okay such so from that if you observe very well you are going to understand that from this knowledge you can say this x which i have written there it is just um it is just negative three okay and then if you pick this negative two there you can say the imaginary part which is the negative seven i so this is just the 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 thing of you trying to to apply the knowledge of the knowledge of difference of two squares because this 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 uh, four it is the same as two squares it's the same as two squared meaning x squared minus two squared that's why there is a minus y this this part is the difference of two squares that one is plus that one is plus that one is minus that one is minus this one and the other one they have to be the same making it the difference of two squares is that okay the person who was yes it's okay okay any other question before i move on any other question Okay, uh, what I've observed is that the network today is somehow breaking and most of your questions I'm not getting them. So, what we are going to do is I'll pick it up from here. I'll pick it up from here. The next time we are going to have a mathematics class because my goal is for me to finish for me to finish quiz one topics okay my goal is for me to finish quiz one topics before we before we we start the other section okay because this is our first month of learning so i want us to finish quiz one topics in short before our fifth 5th of december we need to finish quiz one topics for for mathematics so in this particular case whereby i'm having a challenge with communicating with you so we are simply going to pick it up from here next time we meet for mathematics i don't know if that is okay with you guys please express yourself and i'll be able to to do what you may want is that suggestion okay with everyone just unmute yourself okay yes it is okay all right so if that's the case then 